and welcome back to part two of Broken Sword Shadow of the Templars. We are on our way to Rujari, which is the part of town where Nicole lives. The woman was doing something with a pair of needles that couldn't be described as knitting. She was a cheery old soul, the kind you'd walk across the street to avoid. So, I'm assuming this is the door to her apartment, right? So we could just walk up to it and open it, surely? I pushed against the door, but it seemed to be locked. Hmm. The shop window featured a display of gowns and women's stuff. Hmm, nothing for us then. Let's talk to this old woman knitting. See oh, if she's got anything to say. Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good, and it only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. That's true. Uh, mm, talk about your flowers. Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Yikes. Thanks for telling me. All right, uh, try again. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris, the flame of passion. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Oh, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. I've changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. My oh my, what a surprise. Can you tell me anything I don't already know? Ten francs, please, my dear. Ten francs? That's a ripoff. Please yourself. How does this fortune telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? Well, it's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a, a built-in receiver dish. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. Eh, fair enough. Anyway, on to business. Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me, in the apartment block across the street. I tried the door, but it's locked. You know, I've told the landlord about that a million times. It is the damp. The whole building is like a sponge. It sucks up the moisture from God knows where. You mean the door is stuck because it's swollen? That is correct. There is an art to opening it. Don't shove it hard. Just give it a gentle nudge above the lock. Thanks for the advice. Eh, uh, let's see if she knows anything about her. How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows, insufficient heating, it's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. You're a young lady. She deserves better. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. I don't know. I think she's, uh... Something of a charlatan. She can't really see the future. At least I don't think so. Remembering the flower seller's advice, I pushed the door gently, just above the lock. I don't think you ever have to talk to her again in the whole game. That's the only time. I'll just let myself in. Don't you have Bonjour. a lock on your door? I'm glad you can make it, monsieur. Please, call me George. Fine. I'm Nicole. 
Take your pick, George. Eh bien? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers beneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. He had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck. Hard work, I'd call it. Yeah. What happened? I took my photographs to the editor, but he wasn't interested. Can you believe it? He told me to drop the story. But you're not about to do that. Oh, no. I am going to find out what's behind these killings. You know what I think? It's a conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very quiet about the murder. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious, or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about everyone. Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arnaud Belota, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it! Millions of housewives literally spitting their butts off. Was he killed for his money? No. He had no living relatives, and his fortune went to the orphanage where he'd grown up. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was led to his death by a snowman. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, the controversial Japanese green politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. He was committed to dismantling Japan's automobile industry. I can't see him gaining much support with a loony policy like that. Yamada was a man of vision. He was years ahead of his time. If you say so, how did he die? At the end, or should I say, slippers of a giant emperor penguin. A giant emperor penguin. This um, <clears throat> this killer we're after, he uh, <clears throat> he has style. A snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you what, I won't be accepting any invitations to costume parties. I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance of a big break. Or a premature death. I found a piece of material near the cafe. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. Here, George, it's an enlargement I made. Look what that guy's wearing. Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. Oh, we just That's missed right. him. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his left cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. Oh, a crescent moon. I'm going with crescent moon. That sounds like a better name. I found this tissue down the sewer. Oh, that's disgusting, Georges. I think the stuff on it is grease paint, like actors use. Or clowns. It's still disgusting. Get rid of it. I found this false nose in the sewer. Hey, what's this inside it? The contents of someone's nose? Don't be cross, Georges. It says La Rive du Monde. Masks and costumes. It's a costume shop near the Gare Saint Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. Why don't you put it on, Josh? No way am I wearing this. I look really stupid. Besides, he might have had a cold. Hmm. Let's have a closer look at this photograph. How come you enlarged this photograph of me? Because I noticed the guy behind you, of course. Hmm. We didn't notice anyone walking around. I'm assuming she took this photograph just after we left the cafe, right? 
There wasn't anyone walking around. Hmm. Suspicious. Let's ask her about herself. Tell me more about yourself. Oh, there is not much to tell. Well, how did you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought my first camera. I was eight and my parents had just split up. Oh, um... Charming story. Did you live with your father? Yes, my mother went off with her new boyfriend. I don't mind. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Ah, I'm sorry. Well, it's alright. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really. Always joking and laughing. Papa always wanted I should study art. That's why I went to college. Hmm. Did you learn about photography at college? Oh, God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. We were billed for everything we used. Paint, canvas, paper. Most of my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel hair. The only time I wasn't hungry was the term I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. Hmm. Do you have a boyfriend? That's Whoa. None of your business. It's really forward. You're meant to try and ask that in like a roundabout way without using those specific words, George. Jesus. You don't just come out and say it. At least not all the time. May I use your telephone? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. Hmm. Let's call this Todrick guy. Hello? Who is this? Hi. My name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart, I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No, no, that's not possible. Oh, okay, uh, forget it. Listen, all I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Ah, oh, thank God. I thought you were the police. Brutes. There are innocent lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. Lives that you could save. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Vert? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Todrick. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you be, but sure I am, you don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if you're saying that to make me think you don't know what I mean, but... Oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Todrick. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. Did you know that one of your customers was a part-time clown? If a guy feels happy with a funny nose and custard down his pants, what's the problem? Do you know a guy called Plantar? No. I never heard of him. Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told you, I never heard of Plantar. Did you make a suit for a man with a scar on his face? A scar in the shape of a crescent moon? Maybe. Maybe not. Tell me where I can find him and I'll leave you alone. And if I don't? I won't leave you alone. I can't tell you anything unless you give me his name. Hmm. Oh, that's right. We need the guy's name. I forgot about that. Right. Okay. Okay, fine. Thanks for nothing, Todrick. I already know the guy's name, but I need to, uh... <clears throat> I need to find out how to get it. Hmm. Let's show her this. This is the tool I use to get into the sewers. Fascinating, George. You're not interested, are you? Oh, of course I am. I think it was very brave of you to go down those sewers. Yeah? Well, it was kind of scary, but... Well, I had a job to do. Let's visit that costume shop. I'm going back out to search for that clown. Where? Well, I guess I could visit the costume shop. Good idea.
Yeah, I totally forgot. You've got to go get the name of the guy from the shop and then tell Todrick his name and then Todrick will give you more information. So let's go do that. Here we go. The guy's spoon-shaped face was mournful and humorless. He looked like a vegetarian in a slaughterhouse. Excuse me. Bonjour, monsieur. Please, come in. Welcome. Leave the mundane world behind, for in these four walls, fantasy is king. Uh, I don't want a costume. Didn't you ever dress up when you were a child? Not that I remember. Incredible! You'll be telling me next that you never shared your elder sister's lingerie. I don't have a sister, and I think I'd look pretty silly in a brassiere. I just need some information. Of course. How can I help you? I'm looking for a man who hired a clown costume from you. Oui, monsieur. I do not see how I can help. Don't you keep a record of costumes that you've rented out? Of course, monsieur, but... Uh... Well, then, I'd like to check your records. Give me the names of everyone who's rented a clown suit. Impossible. There are too many. The clown I'm looking for is a cold-blooded killer. Give me his name, and I'll see he's brought to justice. I'd help you if I could, but you can't expect me to remember all my customers. You see, the clown costume is our most popular line, monsieur. On average, we hire out more than 30 clown suits a week. You'll have to give me more to go by. A description, perhaps? Hmm. How come clowns are so popular? I think it has something to do with their unpredictable nature. Personally, I think clowns should be banned, along with mimes. Oh, come now. Who doesn't love clowns? Me, for one. Have you heard of a man named Plantile? I do not recall any one of that name. Oh well, he probably doesn't know. Do you Show recognize the this man? Ah oui, he was here this morning. Are you sure this is the man who bought grease paint? Oui, monsieur. Do you want this red nose back? Not after it's been worn, thank you. So, this is definitely the man who bought the costume. We just need to find out what his name is. Does this dirty tissue mean anything to you? Hmm. Let me smell that. Best Imer's number seven, white pancake. Theatrical grease paint, right? Oh, oui, monsieur. La creme de la creme of Cespian accoutrement. Have you sold any of it recently? Yes, two can. Now we show him the photo again. Are you sure this is the man who bought grease paint? Oui, monsieur. He chose two costumes. Bozo the clown and Seamus the pixie. A pixie? Very smart. Green silk with a taffeta lining. A leprechaun. He gave me his name as Monsieur Khan. Khan, eh? Just check one more time. Are you sure this is the same man who hired the clown suit? Certainement, Monsieur Khan. Excellent. Now we have his name. We're just gonna leave now. Thanks for your help, buddy. My pleasure, monsieur. Allow me to shake you by the hand. Huh? Uh, well, okay. What are you trying to do, kill me? You did not find it amusing? I never saw the funny side of electroshock therapy. Eh bien, it is yours to keep. A gift? Do I need a license? No, but I give you a word of warning, monsieur. What? Remember to switch it off before you visit the toilet. Brumps.
Warning noted. The, uh, the, uh, the hand buzzer is a, uh, <clears throat> a humorous item. You can try using it on every single character in the game, and all of them will have different reactions. Uh, first of all, let's just go back to the cafe. I'm going to try using it on a couple of people. Hi. You're the guy who gave me the tip, aren't you? Huh? The racehorse. Salah Eddin. Oh. Yeah, but... I put every franc I had on that horse. Listen, I... My lifetime savings. Next month's rent. Everything! Oh, God. He won by three lengths! I'm a rich man! Call me Lucky George, the punter's friend. So how come you're still here? Oh, uh, I'm not going to let my newfound wealth change me, not one bit. You go, I guy. this hole, fittings and all. Now, I can come and go as I please. No more clocking on, or completion schedules. No foreman breathing down my neck. Thanks to you, I've found paradise. I'm getting a mushy feeling in my chest. But not half as mushy as your head. What do you want now? Hmm. Show him the photo. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I don't. Oh, okay. I guess he didn't see him. Would you like to shake hands with me? No, I wouldn't. One of the real pleasures of being rich is not having to be polite. I gotta go. Okay. Don't let me keep you. Let's try the guy works here. See if he'll shake my hand. None of this is necessary for forward progress. I'm just doing it because uh, I want to show off some other dialogue. Hi there. Remember me? Ah, mais oui, inspecteur. Have you found him? Who? The man in the sewer, of course. I'm uh, sifting through the evidence. Ah, uh, rather you than me, monsieur. That reminds me, someone's been impersonating you. Came sniffing around just after you'd gone. Bored as brass. He tried to tell me he was a policeman. Inspector Rosso, he claimed. Uh -oh. I didn't tell him I'd been talking to you. Not hours before. Thank goodness. Uh, impersonating a police officer is a serious offense. A man with so little respect for the law must be desperate. Mm -hmm. Yes, my father used to say, desperation opens the door to the devil. He was always coming out with things like that. <laughs> Stupid man. So, uh, uh, when you are not uh, exploring sewers, uh, what do you do? I take a lot of showers. Oh, 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 oh very good, monsieur. <laughs> a policeman with a sense of humor. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Yes, I do. It's that villain I told you about. Aha. Uh -huh. Shake my hand. Go on, shake it. You're joking, aren't you? <laughs> Nothing personal, but you've been mocking about down this sewer. Go on. Wouldn't you like to shake my hand? Frankly, no. Go on. Wouldn't you like to shake my okay, hand? Okay, now repeating Frankly, dialogue. No. I have to be going. Good luck, Inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. Oh, okay. I guess we can't now. We boarded it up. Man, that was quick. Like, we were here only an hour ago, and they've already boarded it up. Damn. Oh well. I was going to ask the um, policeman if I uh, could shake his hand. He's, he himself has something quite funny to say about it. I guess he's gone now. We'll have to wait till we visit the police station later in the game. So, as you can see, once you've exhausted all forward progress in a certain location, the name, um, the name tag 
greys out just to let you know that uh, nothing else is possible in that location. One more touch that I really like from uh, the, bro the first Broken Sword is that it, it, it does its best to help limit your options for forward progress. A lot of old adventure games tend to just let you keep revisiting old areas even if there's nothing new to be gained from them. And like I said, that can have you going around in circles if you're not careful. Whereas this game, it, it, it tries to point you in the right direction by locking you out of options once those options have been exhausted. I do like it. Back to Rujari. Oh wait, no, no, we should take the old lady's hand. Oh, hi. Hello, my handsome friend. Would you like to shake my hand? No, I wouldn't. I can see the future, remember? Oh, right, yes. Would you like to shake my hand? No, I wouldn't. Nope. Talk to her about Nicole a little bit more. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Hmm. Proud, eh? Don't worry. Sure we can tame her. Salut, Georges. What news? I've been to the costume shop. Yeah, I like it. What are you supposed to be? I didn't hire a costume. These are my clothes and you know it. Did you ask about the clown? Yeah. He used the name Khan. He hired two costumes, the clown and a pixie. Then we're one jump ahead of him. How do you make that out? He probably plans to use the pixie suit next time he kills. Oh God, don't let it be me. I don't deserve to die at the hands of a pixie. Don't be silly, Georges. That won't happen. Oh no? No. Because every time you see a pixie, you're going to run like hell. What are you doing to help trace the killer clown? Research, George. Yeah? You have a copy of the clown's yearbook? I have a telephone and lots of contacts. Oh. Well, did you find anything useful? Not yet. I'm employing my first and most useful weapon. What's that? Patience. Oh, I've heard of that. Isn't it a substitute for decisive thinking? That's harsh. That's real harsh. Have you found out any more about the murders? Well, it may be nothing, but both the clan's victims visited Paris earlier this year. When? The second week of July. They were both here at the same time. Did they meet? I don't know, but I can't imagine it was coincidence. Sh shake my hand, Nicole. The guy at the novelty shop gave oh. me this. What oh. is it? A hand buzzer. You put it in your hand and give people electric shocks. Why? It's a gag. A practical joke. <laughs> if you ever use it on me, I'll break your arm. Okay, okay. I get the picture. May I use your telephone? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. Hello? Who is this? Mr. Todrick? Oh, it's you again. What now? I found out the name of the guy I'm looking for. Is that so? Yeah. It's Khan. You know who I'm talking about, don't you? Yes, I delivered the suit to his hotel. The Hotel Ubu. Uh, I uh, don't remember the room number. It was upstairs. The second room on the right-hand side of the corridor. Thanks, Todrick. That's all I wanted to know. Now I've got you, Mr. Clown. So now we have a new click, a new location, the Hotel Ubu. Now we're getting somewhere. Do you know the Hotel Ubu? The Ubu? Yes, I do. That's where the clown stayed. 
Good work, George. Excellent. Let's go visit the hotel. See you later. Where are you going now? I could go hang out at the Hotel Ubu. Watch out for Khan, George. Don't worry, I will. Right, I think that'll just about do it this time. Um, in part three, we'll go to the Hotel Ubu. And see if we can track down uh, Mr. Khan. Find out what he's up to.